Imagine living life as a ghost. Imagine not being able to vote in today's by-elections or to get a driver's license or open a bank account or work or go to school or get health care. Now, suppose you were considered not to actually exist in your own country, being a person suspended in statelessness. It's estimated that over 137 million people in the Southern African region lack any form of identity and nationality documents. The United Nations Refugee Agency, that's the UNHCR, launches today its sixth anniversary of the I Belong campaign, which among other things assists stateless people to actually become documented. To discuss this issue, we are joined by Angel Dikongwe Atangana, who is the Deputy Director of Southern Africa of the UNHCR. And also joining us in the conversation is Sihle Colin Numalo, who was formerly stateless and now clearly is uh, now got his papers and documents. Both of you, thanks very much for joining us for the conversation. Thank you. Thanks to you. Um, uh, Angela, I, I, I gave a little bit of the, the information about statelessness and how big the situation is in southern Africa. I mean, we're talking 137 million people who are undocumented and are basically living life as a ghost because in actual fact, you do not exist. Talk to us about how bad the situation is. Yes, thank you. Good morning again. Well, uh, being a stateless person is tantamount to being legally inexistent because a stateless person is a person without a nationality and without a nationality because of uh, reasons that are beyond his or her responsibility or even control. And that really is tantamount to non-existing and non having not having a right so because having a nationality is actually having the right to have rights and for somebody who is without a nationality everything becomes literally inaccessible to them uh, it's uh, you, you you said it a little bit uh, health care education work all those basic amenities, which for some of us are considered as granted, are yeah. simply impossible, unreachable for a stateless person. And so my uh, take is really that this is a scourge against humanity. And really, our call in UNHCR is to unite our efforts, to synergize in view of reading humanity of this coach, and particularly in Southern Africa, I would like to see that we mobilize all stakeholders and ensure that no child is left to be stateless, no adult is left to be stateless, because being stateless it means being marginalized, being excluded, and in these days of imperative inclusion, specifically with the pandemic, which we are living through, it can be tantamount to a, a difference between life and death. Yeah. And so this is our message. It is as we uh, uh, celebrate the sixth anniversary of the I Belong campaign, we would like everyone to belong. We don't want to see people who are foreigner everywhere who are nationals of nowhere, we want everybody to have a sense of belonging. Indeed, and, and, that's, is and, and that's where the I Belong I campaign, that, the hashtag I Belong campaign comes into this. Yes. But I'm going to get to that in a short while. I just want to, in the interest of time, quickly bring Colin into the conversation. Uh, I beg your pardon, Sihle. Uh, sorry, sorry, Sihle. Um, Sihle, I, I want to hear your story. Uh, it's important that we actually understand Firstly, what happened to you and what it was like being stateless and when you actually discovered that you were stateless and what's actually been done about that. Talk to us about that. Yes, uh, so I was born uh, in or around the Durban area uh, to my mother. Uh, she was moving around a lot at that time and she lived in dire poverty. Uh, she had two children, me and my elder brother, who's two years older than me. 
and she gave us away. She gave my brother to a family member and she gave me to an orphanage in Durban called Darul Yatama. And this orphanage in turn handed me over to another family that took me to Pulukwani and I, I was raised there and went to school there. Uh, I only realized that I was stateless when um, I was going to do matric and we needed an ID to, to write matric exams. And that's when I set out on a mission to find my biological mother and try and get some documentation. And, and that, yeah, that must have been very difficult for you. So up until the age of 18, you never had any documentation whatsoever. In fact, your birth wasn't even registered. So you were wandering around South Africa, which I gather is your birth country, your home, your place of origin. But you were not South African and you didn't even know that. No, I was not. And uh, it was so bad that after my mother died, um, I ended up living on the streets of Johannesburg for about four to five years, living as a stray dog because I couldn't get a job. I couldn't uh, get an education. I couldn't do anything for myself, basically. Yeah. And I've been trying to get assistance from home affairs, social development for the past 15 years. Well, hang on, Sinclair. So, so you are still, you still don't have any documents registered. You still are stateless. Am I, am I understanding you? That's correct. I'm still stateless. Uh, a lot of people have promised to help in the past, but they just promise and then it ends there. And uh, the home affairs officials have been of very, very little assistance and they seem disinterested, really. You know, I, I, Sita, this is, it's very hard for you because you, you can't get a job. You, did you manage to write matric? So you got to matric. Were you able to write those exams? No, I wasn't able to write exams or anything. I, I, I had to drop out. You know, this, this story, it's actually taken me by surprise. I must, I must tell you because, Sita, I thought that you had been successful in actually finding your your worth and because you are you're a south african you were born here um yes. and angela let me let me ask you this question i mean th this is a this is a, a typical example i imagine of so many people that are, are struggling just like sikhle is i mean how what needs to be done i mean are, are the south african government coming to the party obviously this is a southern africa thing but let's let's talk to South Africa and how we are handling this. We have a South African who cannot prove they are South African because they don't have any documents or birth certificate. What happens in a case like this? This is precisely the call we are uh, uh, launching. Uh, since 2014, as you may know, the campaign I belong began. And this campaign is tied to a global action plan. And that global action plan has 10 actions that may be uh, taken by stakeholders, including the states indeed. And one of those actions precisely is about resolving situations of states, which is the case for Zip. What is needed is to allow him to be later register his birth and to indeed uh, uh, link him up to the South, the South African nationality. So yeah. I understand he indeed a DNA test uh, with his uh, uh, the sister to his mother to prove that indeed they are related uh, by blood. And so the uh, authorities in South Africa need to uh, record, to acknowledge this connection and to indeed connect Zile to the South African nationality. That yeah. really would be a great uh, step to the right direction. And it is for the cases like his, there are many thousands out there where indeed the people are literally in a, a, a status of, in a limbo status. Yeah. where they are literally non-existing legally because they can access nothing of uh, uh, which is worth. And mm -hmm. including in this time of uh, the pandemic, they may be finding themselves completely in the margins of the society. And it is of in the interest of no one, states included, uh, communities, societies, that 
these stateless persons would find themselves in the margins of the uh, the, the, the community because yeah. then the overall goal of uh, quelling the pandemic out will simply be defeated. Yeah. So we really call on the authorities of the respective state to please pay attention to this. And they have been doing a great job. Yeah. We only need to rekindle our efforts to ensure that come 2024, we will uh, probably not completely read the world of uh, statelessness, but at least we need to really make giant strides to yes. resolve cases like silly one. Which is very important, and I must, I mean, we, we must commend South Africa to a certain extent, because I know that there was a change in legislation, and that happened at the beginning of this year, and I'm, I'm wondering if many people are aware of it, that I think it was in May that 2020, where unmarried fathers were now able to uh, register the birth of their children, uh, whereas previously Indeed. they were never allowed to do that. Up until May 2020, only mothers were able to register their children if they were unmarried, but now men are able to do that. So this is one big accolade to South Africa and the legislation and how we as a country are trying to get through the issue of statelessness. Sure. Yeah. Um, again, I want to. I just want to quiz you a little bit more on this, um, Sihle. Did Did you mention that you found your brother? Have you managed to find your bi find your biological brother? Yes, I did. Uh, I found him at the time uh, when I found my biological mother because he had moved back in with her. And uh, every time that I went to home affairs officials in Durban, he was always with me to try and help me. Um, get an ID and vouch for me to say that I'm his brother, his biological brother. Yeah. And uh, still no assistance from home affairs. And, and your brother also is, I am assuming, stateless, or has he got any documents? No, he has got documents because okay. uh, he grew up around my mother, yeah. Okay, so he has the documents. You're the one that obviously was, as you would say, put up for adoption. i got some good news for you. Yes. Um, the Home Affairs Department have gotten hold of us now. They want to help you. So oh, great. If, <laughs> Thank if, you. If, if we can do anything, I, I know it's just I know it's just you. I'm actually getting tears in my eyes right now because there are so many other people in this situation, in this uh, in this country and everywhere. But if we can help you, we're going to do everything we can. They have gotten hold of us and they want your number. So I'm going to pass that on to them with your permission so they can help you become someone that is not a ghost in this country. Indeed. Yeah. I would so appreciate that. Thank you so much. Where are you living, if I may ask you? Where, where do you live? Where are you having, where do you make money? What do you do to survive? <laughs> you know, uh, I'm so blessed that I, uh, I joined a church called Every Nation. They've taken me in. They've made me family. What a beautiful part of a bunch of people. And I'm now the caretaker of the church. I live at the church. I work at the church. And that's how I survive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope we help you, um, and and it's the most the, the best that we can do for you. I I, I promise you, we between Sakina and myself, we're going to we're going to make this happen. Um, uh, Angela, just as we as we wrap this up, I mean, you know, one of the scary statistics is that birth registration, and I think it all begins there. How important it yes. is to register your child. I mean, from that age, from when they are born, and I'm reading stats that say that. No birth registration affects 50% of the population in Southern Africa. I had no idea it was that massive. Well, uh, indeed, the statistics we have uh, tell us that um, less than one child out of two is actually registered at birth. And this is precisely where the problem is. Uh, stacks because if you are not registered at birth and if you don't have a chance to regularize this state of affair uh, within a, a reasonable uh, time length, then it becomes a vicious circle. You cannot register, therefore you cannot prove your identity and therefore you cannot uh, 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 import to school, yeah. you cannot uh, sit exams, you cannot uh, uh, apply for a job, you cannot, you cannot, and you cannot. So really, it is crucial, it is yeah. important for parents, for authorities, for uh, okay. uh, all stakeholders to 
ensure that children are registered at birth. Yeah. And we are, com uh, we are encouraged by a number of authorities who indeed are taking this uh, matter seriously in their hand. Okay. We know that in this time of COVID, yeah. uh, many authorities in Southern Africa have indeed made birth registration one of the key services that has been made by Okay, I have to leave it. I have to leave In it short, there. I, I have to. I have to unfortunately yes. stop there, but but I think you've made the point, um, Angela de Congue Atangana from the Southern African branch of the UNHCR, and Sihle Colin Gumalo, who was uh, who is stateless, talking to about the importance of the I Belong campaign. Sihle, you have our word. We're going to sort you out as best as we possibly can. Thanks for joining us. Wow. Yeah, uh, uh, all's well that ends well. I hope I so. I tell you what, I hope we so. always complain when government officials don't do their work. Siat Gozo from uh, uh, Gozo from um, Home Affairs. Yeah. Uh, you know, Siat's always on the ball. Yeah. He's always calling. He's always in contact. And thanks so much for watching Good. and Good. for being in touch with us. We're going we're gonna to sort it up. We'll update you on that story. Agenda up next.